Welcome everyone to the um, Planning Commission meeting here on December 6th, 2022. We are going to start uh, with a Pledge of Allegiance, and that will be led by Randy Hughes. And if all the Planning Commissioners can please mute your yourselves, and then we'll... All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Randy. Let's have a roll call, please. Hey, Commissioner Anderson. Here. Commissioner Carranza. Here. Commissioner Heath? Here. Commissioner Hughes? Here. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Vice Chairperson Keene is here. Chairperson Van Den Eickhoff? Here. All present. Great. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> We've all um, been there before. Yeah. Uh, can I get approval of the agenda, please? I'll make the motion to approve. I'll, I'll second. second. Okay. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Vice Chairperson King? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Carranza? Yes. Commissioner Heath? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. And Chairperson Van Den Eickhoff? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Okay, thank you. We'll go ahead and uh, move into the public comment portion of the meeting. Um, this is the this is an opportunity for any, anybody in the public to address the planning commission over something that we have jurisdiction over, but is not on the agenda for tonight. If anybody would like to speak, if you would like to raise your hand and please state your name um, for the record, uh, you can raise your hand on Zoom. It doesn't look like we have any calling um, participants. But if there's anything that somebody from the public would like to address the planning commission that is not on the agenda. Okay, it doesn't look like it. So we'll go ahead and close the public comment portion of the meeting. Um, can I get a motion to approve the consent calendar, please? No motion. I'll second that. Okay, uh, Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Heath? Yes. Commissioner Carranza? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Vice Chairperson King? Yes. Chairperson Van Den Eickhoff? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. Um, We'll go ahead and move into the public hearing portion of the meeting uh, where the public will be given an opportunity to speak on each of the following items that are part of this public hearing. Um, the chair will open the public hearing and invite applicant or applicant's representative to make any comments after the staff report. Members of the public will be invited to provide testimony to the commission following the applicant. Speakers should state their name for the record and will be given three minutes. After all comments, uh, the pub public hearing will be closed and the commission will discuss the item and take further appropriate actions. We'll start with a uh, disclosure of ex parte, and this is for the conditional use permit AT20 at 2600 El Camino Real. Um, Dennis, any ex parte? Um, the only ex parte that I have is that uh, as a member of the development review, review committee, uh, we heard this project. Yeah. Jason. Uh, no ex parte. Okay. Tori? No ex parte. Great. Victoria? None. And Greg? No ex parte. And Randy? No ex parte. Okay. Uh, I did see this all, as well through DRC. So we'll go ahead and turn the time over to staff for their presentation. Okay. Thank you. I'll go ahead and get my presentation pulled up.
Okay. Here we go. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, so this uh, item that we have tonight is for an equipment rental dealership, um, our equipment's rental and dealership business. Um, it's for, for a business called Giffen, and the rental equipment is the brand Bobcat for the most part. This is a conditional use permit at 2600 El Camino Real. So taking a look at the zoning map, the property itself is in the commercial uh, park zoning district, CPK there in the purple. It abuts Highway 101 and residential multifamily high density there to the east. Um, the property right across the street, sort of where you see that RMF 24, that is the new Emerald Ridge housing apartment project over there. Um, so that's gone in um, just recently. This property is 1.63 acres. And when we take a look at the aerial image, you can see there is one existing structure. Um, and for a little bit more context, it abuts fence factory there to the south. And then again, Emerald Ridge here to the east. So a little bit of background about the project. The subject site does have that existing metal building that you saw in that last picture that will need to be brought up to current code standards because the applicant is proposing to utilize that building with this project. The rest of the site is currently vacant and hasn't been utilized by a permitted use in recent history. So the, the site has um, not had a permitted use. The design review committee did review this project in September of this year and made recommendations regarding new and existing fencing and landscaping on site, which the applicant has addressed. And they also had some questions about the hours of operation, um, the proposed lighting on site and the reflective reflectivity of the roof, which you'll see in uh, an upcoming slide. So the project being proposed is for Bobcat equipment rental and sales of the equipment or a dealership. They again want to utilize and remodel that existing building. It's about 1700 square feet as well as build a new building, which is about 9,400 square feet. This would be a single story building with a mezzanine over the middle of it with an office for the business. The proposal of course includes new parking and landscaping to go along with the new use. And the applicant clarified that the hours of operation are 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily, but they do provide emergency services outside of these standard uh, hours for things like emergency generators. So this use is defined as a sales lot and sales lots that have outdoor sales areas over 10,000 square feet require a conditional use permit in the commercial park zone. Sales lots also have unique development standards that are outlined in the municipal code and that code section is included in your staff report. And the project also has a planned development overlay. So it's in the PD1 overlay zone, which has a couple of um, additional development standards. So here we can see a site plan of the site. There's um, two entrances off of El Camino Real. There's gonna be gates in front of them there, which we'll discuss in just a moment, um, as well as pavers that go around this front U-shaped uh, driveway here. You can see the parking lot is along the side of the property. It includes 20 parking spaces for the business. Um, they're also including a new trash enclosure. And then the space around these buildings would be utilized for equipment parking for um, the equipment that they're using for their sales and rental. So as we've discussed, they're utilizing the existing building and the new building will have that 700, almost 750 square foot mezzanine with an office space. That building, the new building will also act as a space for servicing equipment, the sales of parts, as well as an equipment share showroom. So moving on to the architecture and design, as you can see, there are um, various roof forms to sort of give it this industrial feel, but still make it appropriate with the commercial park zoning district. Um, the colors are neutral in keeping with that industrial feel again with grays, um, mostly there's a, um, that roof on top is a blue roof, 
but the siding you see is that vertical siding with um with a little bit of this CMU block wall along the bottom there for an accent and a little bit more architectural interest. Um, and then the Giffen colors do include this signature orange. Um, so there are accents throughout the building of just a little bit of orange to add some color to the otherwise just gray building. And here are a couple more renderings. Um, this is the, the top picture here is what you would see from the parking lot. Um, if you're parked in the lot, just for reference, this is Highway 101 over here. And then towards this way is El Camino. And then this would be the same um, from the parking lot. Um, this picture here would be what would be seen from um, the freeway there. You can see there's this retention basin back there. So that would be from the freeway. Um, this is that uh, building from, I'm not sure what side that's from actually. Um, that might be the building being remodeled, I apologize. Um, we'll take a look at that one. Uh, and then this is that other side of the building, these bottom ones here. And just to give you an idea of the floor plan, um, as you can see, it's sort of split up into these three different spaces with the service, the parts, the sales, and then the upstairs mezzanine office here. And then this is a picture of that building. As you can see, um, it will be brought up to match what is being proposed with the gray siding and that blue roofing. So again, one of the things that the design review committee commented on was the lighting and the visibility to make sure that um, this wasn't going to disturb the neighbors across the street in the new Emerald Ridge development. Um, so the applicant provided more details about the lighting on site. So they are proposing seven new 14 foot tall light poles throughout the site. And we'll take a look at where those are um, as well as new wall mounted lights that will be installed on the new building and provide illumination on the parking lot. Um, and staff did add some conditions regarding those lights. So we added a condition that the light poles be no taller than 14 feet tall. Upon building submittal, um, building permit submittal, the applicant will be required to provide a photometric light study that basically shows that all of the light is being contained on site. And all exterior lighting shall be designed to eliminate off-site glare. So they should include um, hooded features and the light source should not be visible from off-site. And then um, it's a little bit hard to see here, but you can see these LPs on the um, site plan. And these are the locations of those new light poles. You'll be able to see them a little bit better in an upcoming rendering, but as you can see there, along the front here. Um, there's one along the freeway back here. And then um, there are a couple throughout the site. And then another topic that the design review committee discussed was the reflectivity of the roof. And essentially the roof has to be so reflective in order to meet um, energy code standards, but of course the applicant doesn't want it to be a nuisance either. So they um, really targeted it to meet those energy standards and be as reflective as it needs to be. Um, but as you can see, this picture is an example of what it would be and it does have sort of a matte finish. So the idea is not for it to be super reflective and um, they don't wanna impact the neighbors either. So it meets the standards that they need to meet but is not over the top. And the applicant is building a new trash enclosure. A trash enclosure is um, required by our municipal code. So you can see a couple of different angles here, the front with those two gates that would open into the actual trash facilities. The um, applicant is proposing landscaping around the trash enclosure, which is required by our code. And the enclosure itself includes the standing seam metal roof, as well as a CMU wall that includes stucco, and then these metal gates on the front. So it matches the um, proposed building as well as the uh, renovated building that will be right next door. So moving on to landscaping and fencing. Um, 
The first topic here is about the fencing. You can see a little bit here, these blue lines around the whole site. These are existing chain link fences that are to remain um, and remain unchanged basically for the duration of the project. And the applicant is proposing to install a new six foot tall wrought iron fence along the front here. And the idea of the wrought iron fence is to um, be a little bit more attractive than just traditional chain link fencing, but also provide the security that a business like this needs. Um, so the municipal code does specifically say that for sales lots, any fencing within the first um, within the front setback, which on a property like this would be the first 20 feet or so within that first 20 feet, the fence would have to be no taller than three feet tall. However, due to the nature of the project, staff is recommending the a fence height exception and we provided a finding to meet that exception. Um, and that has been detailed in your staff report. Um, but basically based on the security needs of the site, we are recommending approval of that fence height exception to allow up to a six foot tall within that front setback. Um, and then right now, since the property is adjacent to Fence Factory and this property has been vacant for um, as long as we can remember, it appears that Fence Factory has installed a um, Constantine or razor wire along the top of the um, fence between those properties. That's something that was brought up at the design review committee. So staff has added a condition that they work with the um, adjacent property owner to, to the south um, and remove that prior to calling for a planning final inspection. Um, that Constantine wire is not allowed per our code and it uh, is specifically called out here that it cannot be installed anywhere on the site at any time. The plan development one overlay also requires a minimum rear setback of 10 feet. And the intent of the setback is really to allow adequate space for landscaping to screen and buffer light industrial uses and outdoor land uses from the highway. Um, so we understand that visibility is important, obviously for something like a sales lot and along highway 101. So, um, Staff and the design review committee didn't necessarily want them to completely block the site from the highway. Um, so they do have some native lower um, lying plants along the freeway here, as well as um, they're installing some new oak trees along the back here. And then one of the things that we discussed at the design review committee was to add some additional landscaping um, behind the parking lot because it really wasn't super viable for equipment parking and we wanted to provide that extra level of um, buffering from the freeway. So the applicant is providing uh, new street trees along El Camino Real and these are a couple of Chinese pistache trees with a few crepe myrtles in between and then some native shrubs throughout. Throughout the whole um, setback of the site you can see they do have native uh, plants planted throughout and throughout the parking lot. And then along those property lines, they also have these Arbutus Marina trees. So they'll act as a little bit of a buffer between um, this property and the parking lot and their use and their neighboring properties. And here's a little bit of a better look of that. Um, there's a retention base in there along the highway. And then as you can see, they've added a little bit more greenery behind that parking lot um, just to make it a little bit more attractive from the highway. So moving on to the signs, the applicant is proposing um, a few signs here on the building. These wall signs are 42 square feet each. Our municipal code requires that the wall sign meet um, be no larger than one square foot per linear foot of building, which both of these meet. Um, and then the applicant is proposing to add a new um, monument sign. So the monument sign base meets the municipal code standards and the height of the sign meets municipal code standards as well. So 
all of their signage currently meets municipal code standards. Um, and we often get the question of where exactly is the monument sign going? So I wanted to show this rendering and then it shows a little bit of a clearer image of um, these light posts as well, just to give you a better idea. But as you can see, there's that where that monument sign would be. Um, and then one of the signs is located on the parking lot side of the building and then the other is located along the freeway. So with the use, with a conditional use permit, the use will um, go with the land. So we wanted to make sure that in case this business were to ever move or change or another business would come in, we want to add uh, conditions that are shaped sort of to this use and what's intended today. So um, we don't get anything that's different from the approved use. So we did add some conditions here um, stating that no storage of vehicles are allowed any other place on the site other than where they are designated, as in the parking spaces. Um, all equipment parking must be in areas that have been designated on the site. Equipment stored on site shall be limited to small construction equipment, so this doesn't mean any cranes or bulldozers or dump trucks or any um, large equipment in the future. All construction equipment stored on site shall remain in good condition, assembled and in functional condition, so we don't want any you know, broken down equipment and this to become a place where um, things are just stored and not necessarily as much of a sales lot. And then um, any outdoor storage of construction materials such as pipe or bulk materials shall be prohibited from being stored on site. Um, if a future construction yard is proposed on site, the applicant will be required to amend the conditional use permit and come back to the Planning Commission. And here we have some photos of the site. This top one is from El Camino Real, and then the bottom one, of course, is from Highway 101. And I think we already went through pretty much all of these conditions of approval um, within the presentation, but if you have any questions about any of them, we can certainly bring them up here. Um, the project does qualify for a class three categorical exemption under CEQA uh, for construction of new small structures. This is considered a small, a small structure because it's located in a commercial zone and it's less than 10,000 square feet. So the findings are the um, general findings that are needing to be made with a conditional use permit. Those are laid out within the staff report. And the only unique one is that um, the Planning Commission does need to make a finding to approve that fence height exception for that six foot tall fence within the front setback. So that condition number seven has been bolded and that finding that needs to be made is that the characteristics of the site or site vicinity would make required fencing or screening unnecessary or ineffective. So staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission adopt the draft resolution approving this conditional use permit to allow outdoor sales and rental of equipment in the, con uh, in the commercial park zone based on findings and subject to conditions of approval. So the commission can approve modifications to the project um, if they wish. The commission can determine that more information is needed and refer this item back to staff, or the commission finally may deny the permit and state the exact reasons why. And with that, staff is available for questions. Thank you, Mariah. Um, Jason, go ahead. Um, this is a just a real quick question about the Constantine wire that's currently on the the fence bordering to the south. Is that fence owned by the fence company or is it owned by the applicant? So I think it's basically a would be considered a shared fence. Um, and we did speak with the applicant and they are working with Fence Factory to get that removed. It's our understanding that since this site's been vacant, um, it's not provided a lot of security, but since the this business will have their own security and bring people onto it, hopefully that won't be as necessary. Okay, I just was wondering if um, it was more of an enforcement action on the city's part rather than a requirement of the applicant to have it removed, because 
defense company says, no, I'm not going to do it. And we hold up the whole application because of that, that would be unfair to the applicant. Sure. So, um, uh, either way, if we go forward with this, it would be simply an enforcement action on the city to have them remove it, right? Yeah, essentially, yes. But um, okay. yeah, hopefully it won't be an issue. The applicant, we've spoken to them and they seem like it's going to work out. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Great, great uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dennis, go ahead. Thank you. Um, um, could you go back to the two photographs, one from El Camino Rail, one from the highway, please? Okay. Um, kind of an issue I have with a lot of projects along the highway is that people put signage up and you can see on the very bottom picture there, uh, there's a sign hanging on the backside of a building. Uh, it probably is not allowed, but it's there. Um, are there any conditions uh, I, I wasn't able to see this that prohibits hanging signs on the highway fence or is there any type of uh, uh, discussion about where so, if someone wanted to put fencing along the uh, signs along the highway that would have to be you know on a on a billboard of some type or I mean is there anything that says you can't have signs along the freeway Sure. So um, that fence, I believe, belongs to Caltrans. So they might have their own issues with people hanging uh, signs on the fence. The city typically does allow um, banner signs for limited periods of time. I think you're allowed to have it up for 30 days and then you have to take it down for 60 before you can put it back up. Um, of course, not all of them come up and down, but we do have um, an enforcement mechanism if the banners are there too long, but there's nothing specific about where they can hang it in the conditional use permit. Okay. It just, it's, 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 it's quite pervasive. And again, the, an example right here in our photograph, that sign's been there quite a while. And um, a lot of businesses have their have feather signs or something in, you know, along, that, along that fence. Caltrans doesn't have the time to say, get off our fence. Uh, but uh, if the commission is uh, welcome to it, I'd like to have a condition uh, added on because uh, you know I, we want the best for this business and hopefully they'll survive for a very long time. But as we know, sometimes businesses change and the next person comes in and, and does things uh, maybe not necessarily consistent with what was approved for this particular applicant. So I'd be interested in, in something that says that uh, signs are prohibited from being hung on the fence for at the minimum. Thank you. Do we have any other commissioners that have any questions for staff? Okay, if not, we'll go, oh, Greg. Randy, sorry. Oh, all good. Uh, just um, so I know that the uh, back fence that was brought up there, it mentions that it's um, a Caltrans fence. So is it on Caltrans to maintain that fence? Yes. Okay. Did, just I know that's pretty much common sense. I just want to make sure because I, I, I see where Dennis is going on. And I just want to make sure that we're not overstepping on, on Caltrans on that. But he is correct that they are definitely ran thin in this area. Yeah. Okay, so the applicant has no expectation that they're modifying this fence though back here at all. No, no. They, they wouldn't have the ability to modify that fence without yeah. an encroachment permit from Caltrans and Caltrans probably wouldn't allow it. They can build yeah. additional fences, but we don't like to have fences between fences that create these little spaces where things collect. So Okay, um, awesome. The best best treatment for that is landscape. All right, we're good. Okay, any other questions for staff? If not, we'll go ahead and uh, open the public hearing and invite the applicant or the applicant's representative to address us. Okay, it looks like we have Armando. And if anyone else from the applicant team wants to speak, if you wouldn't mind raising your hand, I'll 
um, put you on here. Good evening, everyone. My name is Armando and I'm with GP Architecture. How's everybody doing today? Good, welcome aboard. Good, good. Um, yeah, so I'm with GP Architecture Inc. I represent um, Giffen Rentals. I do have Travis, um, the owner. This should be available on Zoom uh, for any questions that you guys might have. Um, if, I, if I may touch on the quick questions that you guys had regarding the fence um, and the signage along the freeway. We actually did add a note on our plans regarding that. Um, we also wanted to keep the site clean and the fence uh, along the freeway so that they can have a better view into the equipment. So we did add a note on our plans regarding no signage of any kind allowed to be mounted on the fence along the freeway. Um, just in case that was gonna be an issue. Um, we also wanted to keep that fence clean and open so they can view the equipment and the building. Um, just wanted to say that regarding that and anything else you guys, any other questions? Do we have any questions of the applicant? Nice building. Thank you, Armando. It doesn't look like the uh, planning commissioners have any questions for you. Yes, thank you. Um, I guess, yeah, if I wanted to touch, if I could touch a little bit on the building, it is gonna be a full metal building, uh, metal panels, metal panel sidings, metal panel roofs, um, storefront windows. Um, we do have the mezzanine upstairs. Um, it's gonna be a very, very typical um, equipment rental, but with a little bit of a high end because we do have a, a full showroom, um, a parts department um, in a small kind of repair shop. Um, so it would be kind of the full shebang bang. When, once you go here, you will be able to have all those services available to you. Um, the smaller building that we're gonna keep, the existing building is gonna be more for, for storage, um, for storage of um, small equipment or small, smaller things that we, they would need to use as far as the services, um, as far as tools and things like that so that they're not visible on the site. Um, but not basically, not bulk storage, um, just as far as whatever they need in order to keep servicing the, the equipment. Um, yeah, we do have full landscaping trees all the way around the site. Um, and along the freeway, we kind of kept it to the minimum so that they can have a, a view of the building and the equipment from the freeway. Um, other than that, I don't, I don't see anything else, um, unless you guys have any other questions. Go ahead, Dennis. Um, Armando, did, at the Development Review Committee, did we discuss uh, repair of vehicles and, and things like that during that meeting? No vehicles, just equipment that needed to get repaired, but no actual um, commercial motor vehicles or... Uh, no, I mean, so if uh, someone brings in a backup tractor or something and it's inoperative whatever reason is it going to be worked on at a site or would be done somewhere else no it will be we, we we do have a shop so it will be done inside of our shop okay I don't know if she can show you the floor plan we the the first part of the building starting from the from the front of it it, it is a shop so the repairs will be done inside um like a typical like if we would take your your car into the shop to get an oil change Mm -hmm. So the first part of that building, it's pretty much a shop, maintenance shop, if you wanted, or if you needed to repair your equipment. Thank you. Armando, if I could, if I could just touch on that as well. Thank, thank you, first off, to, the, to all the people that took time this evening, probably out of their evening for dinner or happy hour. So thank you all for joining the meeting and taking the opportunity to consider our project. My name's Travis. I'm the owner of Giffen Rental and the real estate. Um, but I, I want to just address the, the repairs. So yes, they, we will have, because we're a, a dealership, a Bobcat dealership, we will be performing warranty work on the construction equipment, but it will all be done indoors in a shop, indoor shop atmosphere. So we won't have equipment torn apart outside the shop. It'll, everything will be done uh, in a professional manner indoors, you know, up to, up to this, you know, to the, to the uh, safety and, um, you know, building codes and whatnot, so. 
could you talk about um, you had presented to the Development Review Committee? I believe this is your fifth business along the highway, is it not? Uh, it would it would be our it would be store number five for us. Not all of our facilities are we're not lucky enough to have all of them on the freeway, which we we wish we did. Uh, we have we do have a, a location in Ventura, which is off of the 33. Uh, wish it was on the 101 like this one, uh, but it's off the 33. Our facility in Goleta is <clears throat> excuse me is um, not freeway exposed. It's on Hollister Avenue in Goleta. We have one on in Santa Maria on Blosser, and then we have one in Salinas that uh, is dedicated to servicing our Caltrans account for District 5 for our contract with Caltrans for equipment sales and rental for District 5. Um, and this one will be this this will be the fifth store, which uh, which will be kind of our showpiece. We're very excited about this particular project because it does have that one on one exposure. So that's why we went the extra mile and really took the effort to make this building a showpiece. And, you know, we, we were very, very excited about this particular branch just because it will have the one on one exposure. So that's why we had to fight just a little bit to get that, you know, uh, you know, not too much landscaping in front of the building so we could expose the, the, the actual building so that it could be seen from the freeway. So people could at least see that we are selling brand new Bobcat equipment. Um, and then, of course, there's the rental aspect to it as well, which in any any equipment dealership rental is a big uh, it's a it's not a big portion. I shouldn't say big, but it's a component of the business um, that needs to be there so that people can test out the equipment. So that's where the emergency services comes in on our hours because we will get calls from uh, Cal Fire or the Sheriff's Department or any kind of emergency type of type of application where they may need a generator uh, due to a forest fire or power outage or light towers or, or pumps in a flood situation. So that's why we wanted to make sure we also had the opportunity to utilize the property outside the normal business hours but only for emergency purposes. We're not, we're not looking to be open 24 hours a day. I hope I answered that question properly. I, yeah, I think that's I, what you asked. Right? You've been very successful and we thank you for choosing a task at Arrow. Well, thank you for those kind words. Greatly appreciated. Victoria, you had a question? Looks like you're still muted. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> I was actually very curious about the emergency services. So I was going to ask about that. And I guess to add on to what um, uh, Mr. Twining was saying, um, what, like how many emergency equipments do, do you have available for, like you said, accounts with Cal Fire and such like that? Like I'm thinking about the probability of folks calling in and, and, wanting those services after hours? You know, by the grace of God, luckily it's it hasn't been a huge um, source of business for us just right. due to the, you know, the, the natural fact that, you know, unfortunately we do have, we do have emergency situations to pop up, but you know, they're far and few between and let's hope they stay that way. Uh, but we currently have about a 25 to $30 million fleet of equipment throughout those branches. And the opportunity for emergencies after hours is very minimal, but we want to be able to offer that. And usually it's a call from Cal Fire or from the Sheriff's Department. Hey, we've got a big problem. We need to power up uh, emergency trailers uh, as a command unit. Can we get some generators? And then we'll send somebody down uh, to pick those up and deliver them to wherever the wherever that emergency situation is occurring. Uh, but again, they out, out of our five or four branches currently, um, they are far and few between. But we just wanted to be completely transparent oh, and yeah. open yeah. about the fact that, that we we may have to come into the the shop at night to pick up some light towers in a situation like that, or generators, or or pumps, or whatever it may be. Um, and, and sometimes it's not even, believe it or not, it's not even the sheriff's department. When out of our Galita branch, when we had the mudslides back in 2018, we had we had to run in and get we had to get generators so people could keep the refrigerators going because they were uh, they were they were uh, breastfeeding and they were pumping for milk, so they needed to make sure that they could keep the the milk. Do you know uh, who I am? On ice. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think he knows I'm a doula and I'm a breastfeeding mother. <laughs> oh, well, 
then yeah, then you then you, you, you understand those calls. <laughs> I, I didn't, but I, I th thank you for doing that. So <laughs> I do lactation support. Um, anyhow, <laughs> well, yeah, no, I I think in general, I mostly wanted to ask that because I do think it it's an added benefit that you're in our neck of the woods and providing that emergency service. So I um I actually do appreciate that. And yes, by the grace of God, hopefully those services aren't needed too much and yet they are in our backyard. And I think disaster preparedness is something that more and more people unfortunately are having to think about on a, on a, a you know, a real level at home. It's not just about the, uh, the icebergs melting. So, all right. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Sure. Any other questions for our applicant? Okay. We'll go ahead and open it to the public for public comment. Um, can, I, you... can I add, can oh, I sure. add one Go more ahead, thing Travis. about the, for, forgive me, I'm sorry, we did want to address the fence. The, um, the, the fence with the barbed wire is currently, the barbed wire is, um, it was installed by Fence Factory. And of course, we're working with them to uh, a peaceful resolution of the barbed wire, explain to them now that we'll be a business next door and a viable business with employees there um, and putting up other fencing and proper lighting that they won't need that that additional barbed wire. So we can't really control if they say no on the barbed wire, we can just try to peacefully work that out with them. And they've been wonderful to work with. We actually bought the property from them and they bought property from us in Ventura and ended up being kind of a land swap deal. So we're, we're very good friends with, with Fence Factory and they're, they've been great to work with, but I just wanted to make sure that I did add that it, it is out of our control because that barbed wire is not on our property. It is actually on their property, on their fence. Um, it is a shared fence, but the barbed wire actually tilts towards their property rather than ours. So we're, we will work with them in every facet to make sure that that gets removed and up to code, but it, it is not hundred percent in our control. So I, again, I wanted to be full, fully transparent about that. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for clarifying. Sure. Okay. Um, then we'll go ahead and open public comment to anybody else in the public that would like to uh, make comment on this project. If you would like to raise your hand in Zoom and we can uh, bring you in to the conversation. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody raising their hand. Um, in that case, we'll go ahead and close the public um, hearing portion of the meeting, bring it back to the Planning Commission for any discussion or a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Thank you, Jason. Uh, are you going to motion that we? Uh, can we put up? Yeah. Can, uh, can you put up the? Um, Okay, there we go. and if you could just read it out. There we go. That, Jason. Make a motion that the Planning Commission adopt the draft level resolution approving conditional use permit, uh, USE 22-0020, allowing outdoor sales and rental of equipment in the commercial park uh, CPK zone based on findings and subject to conditions of approval. I will second. You beat me on it, Jason. <laughs> And then the fencing thing. Sorry, is that is that a part of it? I I think that the applicant has already made it clear that he doesn't plan on using the fencing um, as for his signage. So I don't know if that's really necessary. But they did put wanna, a, Do you want to amend yours to include that, or how, or is that? Are you just well? If if Dennis wants to uh, to force the issue, then I'll be happy to put an amendment in there to keep, uh, uh, to have them add a notation that they are to keep the uh, fence line, uh, uh, the not to affix anything onto Caltrans's fence line. How's that? Okay, Randy, you wanna second that? Yep, I will second that. Okay, there we, go. we have. Okay, uh, can you hear me okay? 
Yes. Okay, Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Caranta? Approved. Commissioner He? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Vice right, Chairperson King? Yes. And Chairperson Van Nykoff? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Great. Thank you. Well, we look forward to uh, having your business in our community and uh, hope to see the ground moving in shortly. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that item for business and let's look at our agenda here. Um, uh, do we have any commissioner uh, comments or reports? Dennis? Any um, good news about general plan information from the director when he has time? Well, let's let's uh, we'll move to the director's report here soon, and then we can ask him, him questions on that. But I had one thing. Yeah, Victoria. Um, regarding the equality mural project, I'm still on the hunt on the volunteer committee for more. Um, possible walls and business owners or property owners. So if you have any potential thoughts on that or um, actual contacts, I would love to talk with you, my fellow commissioners. We have about- I love the one you put on the new building on traffic. Ah, awesome. The cage bird one. Oh my God, it is amazing. It's It might be my favorite one. That one and the other one on traffic with the cranes. Yeah. Just you're doing like beautiful work. It makes our city- gorgeous and unique and fantastic so i will keep my eye out for walls yes please if you're in any shop and you know sometimes it's not the business owners that can actually make any calls however they know their landowners and they can chat with us about it and it really helps to have their input although it's not the final say so um, are you trying to keep it in downtown or do you want to look for something more on the south or what are you unfortunately it it needs well, I guess fortunately it is in downtown specifically because we're trying to create that placemaking and that um, walkability of a public art gallery. And so we are working with Visit Atascadero in the city to basically have a walking map that will be a kiosk that's downtown and then also virtually available online. So people will be able to download that map and look at all of them plus the ones that are uh, added outside of the Equality Mural Project because it, it makes sense to highlight all the murals downtown. And that yeah. one, that's the Cranes. It's it's actually a little bit on the outskirts of the downtown limits, but the committee decided that that mural, because it is walkable from traffic and it includes the Parks and Rec Department, and there's a lot of people in and out there for pickleball for basketball for soccer you know for playground that it made sense there and that people would go the extra mile and it's an entry point into downtown so yeah no thank it's you it's awesome for that. it's awesome i really like it i drive by it every day <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it also is pretty um amazing to see some of yeah the reactions of other businesses and some of our artists that maybe some of them this is their first public mural they've done other work um, but this is their first exterior wall. They're getting calls from businesses all over Atascadero now saying, hey, we'd like you to add some accents in our interior business. So it's really good for them too. And um, I know down in Slow on the back of the Fremont, they did a huge mural. So like if you see a wall, don't discount the backs of things because that mural on the back of the Fremont is amazing. So and we have parking lots and alleyways and stuff. And so that might be some options too. Thank you. Good canvases too. Sometimes the texture is great. Um, just a reminder that we do have a winter wonderland this Friday. Hopefully if we don't get rained out. Yep. I'll be down there making cotton candy as usual. So why don't we uh, turn over time to Phil for our breakfast report. I do look forward to Winter Wonderland. I'll be there myself. Uh, it's, it should be good. I don't think it's going to rain till way, way late in the night. So I think we should be all clear. Saturday, on the other hand, is going to be pretty rainy, it looks like, in the forecast. So getting our, our share this winter, it's going to be, it's shaping up to be nice. It's already getting green out there. I love it. It's, it's yeah. fantastic. 
Might have to so, watch, uh, might have to watch the CIF game in the rain. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Is that's here in Atascadero on Saturday. It's a rare event. Uh, it's been many years for Atascadero. So, um, but yeah, it's probably going to be rain, rainy. <laughs> that could be a lot of fun, a lot of mud. That could be cool. Um, so the general plan. Before I talk about that, let's talk about the calendar. Where do you guys want to be on December 20th? Here what are you, what are you or asking? somewhere else? Hmm? Do we actually have a choice? <laughs> you don't have I mean, choice. are you just teasing us or do Obviously, you really you want to have an a answer? Choice because we're actually not having a hearing. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So I won't see you again until the new year. Uh, well, I probably will see you again around, hope, hopefully around about town, but um, yeah, not another <laughs> hearing until then. And uh, I, I should let you know that our first hearing in March will be in person. So the rules are changing. We got to go back to being in person next year. I'm giving you a long advance notice. Yeah, I know it's a big change. Um, so we'll talk more about that, but that's coming. Um, we'll be up in the rotunda of City Hall. It'll be very formal. Um, so it might change things up a little bit. So we'll see. Um, well, that'll, that'll be interesting. I think I'm the only commissioner that has been in the rotunda. I know. Oh, I know. We all be like, <laughs> I have to wear pants. No. <laughs> please. All right. Please do. <laughs> TMI. Um, anyway. Thank you, um, Dennis. The general down. plan. Yeah. Now you got that vision in your head. Um, <laughs> so there's a report that I would I'd like all of you to check out for homework. Uh, it won't be ready and so actually it's going to be check online on Wednesday evening or Thursday. It's a city council agenda report about the general plan update and it basically tells the council where we are in the process, what's happening right now. And it really highlights the series of questions that the consultant um, I asked several of you if you attended. Did any of you attend the, the consultant um, questionnaire? One of you? Okay. That you all got invited, a couple of you got invited to that. I There's more too. opportunities to answer those same questions if you didn't get that opportunity. And one of those opportunities is actually, you know, at this city council hearing, we'll be going through the same set of questions. We'll be telling the council where we are in this process. Um, and we're still in this data selection process where we're gathering data on the city. We're looking at all the land use. We're looking at all the transportation. We're looking at all the finances. We're looking at all these things <laughs> and starting to talk to people to help gather that background data. The next phase we're going to move into is really some more heavily concerted public outreach. And so we're going to have some, some big public outreach sessions in January, February, and then we're going to come to planning commission and go to city council with some outreach before we start getting into some formulation of real alternatives of creating policy and creating a land use plan and creating a circulation plan. So this whole thing is going to be happening. I mean, the really the heart of the general plan activity is like the next six months. And then beyond that, we get into sort of an analysis and environmental review, which could possibly take almost an entire another year. So now, um, right after the holidays, right after Christmas and New Year's, is really going to be the time when we'll need to make a concerted effort of really tuning in and really making things happen. This report that, that we just drafted the city council really kind of pencils that out, outlines what's happening, outlines where we're at in addition to answering or asking these questions of council in the public. So feel free if you want to watch the hearing next Tuesday. Uh, you're welcome to do that. That's on the 13th. Um, you can just watch that online. But either way, definitely check out the city council report. That'll be available on our website starting either Wednesday evening or Thursday. Uh, that'll give you a more thorough description of that. And our consultant will be doing part of that presentation at the city council next week as well. So it's finally beginning to happen. I know it's been kind of quiet in the background as we gather this data. There hasn't been a lot to talk about with the community yet. There hasn't been a lot of real planning going on, but all that's going to happen. So hang in there. But anyway, let me know if you've got questions about that tonight or if you've got any questions on anything else. Dennis or um, I Paul. had scheduled a meeting, but I had that was the week that I had COVID. Uh, there's still more opportunities to to speak with the consultants. So I'm very interested in my uh, trying to push my Piazza idea. 
Uh, well, what uh, I can do is actually have you even possibly speak with the consultants, um, you know, one on one over the phone or over a, a Zoom email if you weren't able to make it because of COVID. I'm sorry to hear that. So I, I had it. I'm, I'm, I'm free of that I'm, because I'm leaving to Thailand. Well, that's right. Uh, um, yeah. Well, when, are you, when are you leaving this weekend? Monday. Monday. Okay. So you probably should chime in. Let's, let's get you hooked up. Why don't you get a hold of me tomorrow at the office? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other, Victoria? I think both Victorias have their hand raised. Do you want to yeah, go first? Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll, I can go first. I'm hoping mine is quick. Um, one, uh, so I, I hang out in the Atascadero groups on Facebook, and uh, someone was asking if we have an opening date on the new Taco Bell at Del Rio. Maybe there's a, been a little bit of a delay because of a transformer installation uh, mm -hmm. from PG&E, which is a very common situation right now in terms of getting the staffing and getting the timelines ready for those guys to get things installed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could, it's probably going to be the first week of the new year is what it's kind of looking like. They're oh, pretty much for done for Christmas. Yeah, they're going to get, you're going to miss it a little bit for Christmas, but I think about the first week of the year, they're kind okay. of almost done, but they were even asking for a temporary generator. That's kind of messy. It gets really expensive because of the transformer issue, the power hookup issue, but they're really close. And then the second thing on that was like, there's like a silver reflective material. I thought it was just insulation, but I was asked to check. There's like Where, a silver reflective material. There's like a column that goes up the side in the front of the building and it has a silver reflective material. And someone was making a little stink about how reflective it was. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's just insulation, but huh. I thought I would check it. I haven't it. seen it. Maybe we can get a piece of sandpaper out there and scratch it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. Fill it down. <laughs> Kelly's going to uh, weigh in. Kelly's going to weigh in oh, on that material. I, I don't believe that that is the final material. I believe that that feature is supposed to be purple. Okay. Um, so I do think they're kind of like a smooth uh, purple panel. Um, so hopefully those get covered up soon. I, I noticed that as well. I mean, it's been so cloudy and rainy, you know, it's like whatever, but I just got to ask these questions. And then yeah, my other question you. for me was, uh, what's the plan with the El Camino downtown parking thing? You know, the whole new plan with the parking and the media. Glad you asked. That. I'm glad you asked. That's another item that will be going to city council very soon and not going to city council because we want to review it again. Uh, it's going to city council because we want to show them some details about how we're developing the construction <clears throat> plans. We're actually working with the Wallace group to draw up all the actual construction plans for that project. Um, it will actually go into construction in 2024, um, but it takes a few months to actually draw up the construction plans and then we have to get those construction plans approved by the city council. And then we have to go out to bid and then we actually have to build it. So it's it's moving forward. But in the meantime, this next year, there's gonna be a lot of repaving projects downtown. So people will think we're actually getting ready to do that, which we're not, we're doing other stuff. But 2024 will be the year of the downtown infrastructure enhancement plan. So um, keep uh, your ears open, your eyes peeled for those construction plans moving forward that the city council will bless and there'll be a couple different options of things they can look at. We're dialing in features like landscaping and lighting and paving type and, you know, number of parking spaces versus number of trees. Those are the kind of questions that we're answering now. The design won't change. It's all laid out. It all works from a traffic perspective. Um, it's looking really good. It's probably one of the most exciting things that, that I will have worked with as a planner. Um, in a downtown, I think it's one of the biggest game changers that we have for our community, and it'll be the glue that adheres our downtown together. For sure. Well, now I know, and so when I get those questions when you start your paving projects, yeah. I will correct yeah. them. I also posted yeah, but, your email address on that page, so hopefully yeah. that doesn't go awry. <laughs> Well, I was like, there. just email Phil. He knows. That's always good. That's <laughs> fine. I'm, I'm totally cool with it. You can give my personal home cell phone number too. It'll sure, yeah, I could do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, putting that on Facebook uh, won't go badly at all. Okay, I'm um, all done, Victoria. It's all you. But yeah, I think in January that our public works division will be presenting the construction plan oh. options to the council. Um, and we'll probably have a little public workshop on that too, just to get you know a little last bit of outreach, even though we did like two years of outreach on it. So. 
Okay, my my one year old's getting bathed now, and I can hear the protesting happening. It's like, <laughs> okay, maybe I should have went first. But anyway, um, yeah, one of the small business owners that's in the downtown area was asking, and a good question, because I think it'll come up again. But how does that downtown Atascadero infrastructure enhancement plan? How does that run in parallel with the updating the general plan? Like does that get paper clipped into the update or they were concerned about it. They said, well, why are we having an update? And then is that a part of the update or, you know, and I explained it's the entire city, whereas this plan yeah. is specific to the downtown and yeah, the general I just plan didn't know is, how to answer that exactly. No, that's a really good question actually, because it really puts it in perspective what a general plan really is. And a general plan is just like the name implies very general, right? It talks about, <laughs> the broad land use plan for the city. It talks about the broad transportation plan for the city, and it gives broad, far-reaching policies that guide those things. But what the general plan doesn't do is get into the nitty gritty and the details of, you know, certain improvement projects that may happen throughout the city, even though they may get mentioned in the general plan and a policy that, hey, we should do things. I mean, a general plan policy might say things like, we should do things to improve pedestrian circulation in the downtown and improve safety in the downtown and improve That's commerce good. in the downtown by looking at streetscape projects. That would be a general plan policy. And it might have some graphics that show some ideas, but it wouldn't actually do an implementation project like this, which we're actually already following by doing this project an implementation of a policy that was actually drafted in our 2002 general plan okay. about our downtown right. and and doing things of this nature. So it it doesn't really alter that at all. Um, although now that we are doing projects like this, you know, it may impact how future policies get developed in our general plan. And sure. because we like to talk about it and 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 do other projects in other areas. We might look at other things in other locations along El Camino Real outside the downtown to change our circulation characteristics or along Moro Road or in other areas for that matter to make them safer and to make all modes of traffic flow better. And when I say all modes, when we say that, we mean pedestrians, bicycles, vehicles, wheelchairs, all the whole bit, you know, considering all yeah, of those the, modes of transportation. With all that development at the Del Rio, intersection i mean it it may be something we need to look at if there's if once that grocery store goes in and all those and i mean that will be really walkable but can we cross the street to go to the other things because yeah. that may get more stuff across the street i know we, we everybody do. calls the outlets but isn't outlets anymore yeah we need a new look at that and unfortunately that ship has sailed a little bit because the del rio specific plan that was adopted over a decade ago um, really spelled out the majority of those improvements. And um, they're a little different than what we might have done today in terms of the widths of those roads and pedestrian circulation. Um, but it is another opportunity in the future. You know, how should we deal with that? And we're also going to have to, at some point, deal with all of our overpasses of the freeway. And they're all undersized. They all have a very poor pedestrian and bicycle circulation and vehicle circulation for that matter. And that's the kind of broad topic that we'll be addressing in our general plan, but we're not gonna get down to the level of really planning out what details might be able to happen for each of those. And I was also curious while we're on the phone uh, together on this com committee, um, because we don't have a chance to talk at all elsewhere with Brown Act and such, um, was there any ideas that came out of, you know, the the meetings that the individual commissioners had with the the design group for the general plan? I'm just curious if there was talks about how to involve the public more because that's something that Phil said that we can help with, and as soon as next year. So, um, were there like specific things that got highlighted? Because I know for me there was one that I thought was really great that came out of the meeting. I wanted to mention. Um, it had yeah. To do, yeah, garage talks is what he called it. <laughs> um, and I hmm. said, okay, I don't know if I like the name, but I get the concept. Um, because I mentioned that there was a lot of people on my street in my neighborhood that I think represent a large part of Atascadero. They've lived here forever. Their kids have been raised here. 
they're not necessarily into some of the new buildings downtown and the look. They don't necessarily know if they like the whole road diet thing. They might have different cultural perspectives on how the town's shaping up and how big we need to grow and if we actually need to focus on growth at all. And so I thought that, you know, it's great that there's so many people excited about community development and city planning and wanting to show up to these meetings. And, you know, I'm like, <laughs> bikeability. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Mixed use, you know, and I'm, that's cool. And art and revitalization and all this. And then I'm like, wait, no, if I talk to my neighbors who are majority, like on my street, they're going, Victoria, we got some things to talk about like this, you know, I don't know, carrying capacity, like let's, let's, let's talk. So and you're touching the greatest aspect ever because these are the folks that are really hard to get to come out, really hard yes. to reach, really hard to communicate with. Yes. And that's exactly what say. we're trying to do. We're trying to, so if you can grab your whole block and yeah. bring them to one of our open house workshops for our general plan come on so out. we can talk to them and hear from them. And not that we're going to do everything they tell us, but I want to hear from them. And we so we can educate them on these topics. Richards. Hmm? Yeah. The Richards. Yeah. Because he <laughs> was, he was my, my beacon um, of okay. example. But anyway. So, and, it, and that's, a, that's a problem that's plagued at Tascadero for years. It's really hard to get the, the regulars to come out and give us some input. And you, know, you might hear from people that are really upset, or you might hear from people that are really passionate. Other than that, it's like, yeah. you know, people, people go about their lives and they're busy and, you know, we, we need that and we need to, they need to understand where we want to go. And well, then you know, the reality is our city really can't grow much. It's not going to really grow. It's, it's actually, we're trying to stop it from shrinking more than anything else. Uh, That's about it. You know, <clears throat> well, the way he talked about it was that there would be, um, you know, levels of diversity as far as age groups and, different vocations maybe you have like a family oriented person in the 30s 40s you have a you know single uh no kids then you have the older retirees and you have people talking to each other so bringing those groups out in a way that we kind of come to them so anyway i just i'm excited about that opportunity get yeah your, get your six pack <clears throat> walk down the street yeah. sit down in the garage open up a bit can and Sure. <laughs> if you guys know, if you guys have ideas have about been... what might be effective yeah. to engage these folks, even if it means going out to a neighborhood, you know, and if there's a place, you know, where we can go to a park and and have a barbecue and have a gentle plan barbecue and have people come out, whatever. Yeah, we're totally yeah, yeah. into it. Yeah, or we could just wait until after all these projects are done and then just put Phil's email on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> I got nothing to do anyway. Yeah. So uh, broadly speaking, generally plan wise, as we uh, are looking at the downtown parking plan, have we been considering uh, alternate routes to move the traffic around the downtown? Because right now it's used highly for commute. And with the restrictions that or the, with the things that we're doing, Will it be as easy to drive, or are we going to say here's 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 other routes you can take besides this as we go into that plan? Is anything like we, that? We don't believe we have to show people different routes. They're going to find their routes on their own. People always take the path of least resistance. It's like water. You put water down a river, you throw a dam, and it's going to find its way around it. Yeah. That's it's the where same. They drive down neighborhood streets, though, and they speed, yeah, and I, like they do in El Camino. If they want to go fast, streets. they got to hop on the freeway. And here's the reality: we had two different traffic engineers evaluate this plan. Now we know that it works during the peak hours, which are school pickup and drop off times, and so it's not really a significant concern. Here's the issue: it will add um, ten to fifteen seconds to your drive through downtown. Oh. And it will be slower, um, which will make it safer. Um, and there will be congestion during pickup and drop off hour. There already is. It's not going to improve that situation. And more people may decide to hop on the freeway if they're really not wanting to come downtown. If they're wanting to just go through downtown to get somewhere else, they might take an alternate route. That's whole and that's, that's okay. Because... Um, I mean, what we've demonstrated is we we don't need a five lane former highway 
through a downtown that we want to create as a walkable space. We just don't need it. Um, and it's been demonstrated over and over. And I think it's it, it will be a change for some. Some people will be frustrated by that idea. And that is the same thing they faced in other communities when they did this change, a lot of frustration. Um, but then after it was done, people would never go back. They would say, oh my gosh, I was really skeptical. I was really frustrated. I was really mad that you're taking my fast route away. But then once it happened, it was like, wow, I would never revert and go back. Um, so it, it is a significant change, but it's only a couple of blocks. So <laughs> we finally have a quorum of seven. That's great. Yes, seven and six and a half. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> She's growing fast. up. Oh, yeah. Man. Were all these faces. Wow. Yeah. Anyhow, um, anything else? Uh, happy holidays. Happy New Year. Uh, I hope you all have a great time. I won't see you till after then. And like I said, stay tuned with those couple of things, but nothing else unless you guys have questions. Super. Well, thank you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. And thank you. Thank you. For thank you, everybody. Thank you, Phil. We'll right. go ahead and adjourn to on our... Uh, well, till January. Merry All right. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas everyone. Take care. And remember, no throwing snowballs at the snow piles downtown <laughs> Friday night. Oh, I'm working it, so I, I'm allowed. <laughs> so I can throw them at you. Awesome. That's yes. considered enforcement. <laughs> I'll show my yeah, I'll be working of you all. Supervising Those are the fair snow game. Pile. Jason, get him. <laughs> there you go. Come, get, come get some uh, cotton candy. Alrighty. Yes, definitely. Bye-bye.